go. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor. I tell you, every time I do that in the morning because I'm going so fast, I replace advisor with administrator. I think probably because I've been an administrator for so long of finances and businesses and taxation, mediation, that I tend to always think that I'm an administrator, which I am. But to you, I'm an advisor. And uh, that's what I just want to be. I just want to be an advisor. I just want to be a mediator. I just want to talk about stuff that affects all of us. This morning, we're going to talk about something that you probably probably don't even want to hear about, but I'm going to do it anyway because we need to know what it, what's, what's happening in our news media. And I am specifically talking about the ethics, the ethics of the media. I have written about this in my book, um, Ethically Thinking, It's Not That Hard. You can buy it on Amazon. I put a whole chapter together on the ethics of the media. Because you see, there is a society out there that journalists belong to, or they're supposed to. And it's called the Society of Professional Journalists. And on their website, they have published their ethics, code of ethics. Now, me as an accountant and as a mediator, I have a code of ethics. In fact, I have those code of ethics up on the wall so that I see it every single day. It's sitting right beside me. I know and I adhere to it. Because I know if I don't adhere to my code of ethics, I'm going to be in trouble, big-time trouble. Unfortunately, the same standards are not true with the journalism industry. Journalist industry. I'm going to read you the Code of Ethics because I think it's really important that we understand what they're not doing. <laughs> and it's a lot. So the first part of the Code of Ethics is really interesting. It says, seek truth and report it. Seek truth and report it. The problem is that you and I have a problem with their truth because it gets corrupted by their politics. And that is a big thing. So it says this. Ethical journalism should be accurate and fair. That's the first line. Have we seen that? On all of the news agencies, on all of the internet and web source news, do we see it ethically? Do we see it accurate and fair? No, we don't. Next line. Journalists should be honest and courageous in gathering, reporting, and interpreting information. Journalists should take responsibility for the accuracy of their work, verify information before releasing it, use original sources whenever possible. Not an unknown source. You don't report unknown sources, especially if you haven't verified and talked to that unknown source. But we see it happening all, all the time. In fact, I saw it this morning um, on Twitter where it stated that they, they were talking about uh, um, Donald Trump and it was this whole gangbang attack on Donald Trump. And in the bottom it says, per an unknown source. Doesn't say it's reliable. Doesn't say it's been verified. It just says an unknown source. Remember that neither speed nor format excuses inaccuracy. Provide context. Take special care not to mis misrepresent or s oversimplify in promoting, uh, uh, previewing, or summarizing a story. Gather, update, and correct information throughout the life of a news story. Do we see that ever happening? No. In the past few years, the media has published stories that was factually incorrect. Did they ever go back and correct it? No. Did they ever go back and say, we misstated it and we need to re-correct it? We need to correct it. No. Very seldom have we ever seen that. They just put out the news story and then they leave it there, but they never go back to that news story if there needs to be a correction. So they're in violation of the Code of Ethics. Gather, update, and correct information throughout the life of a news story. We never see that happening. 
Be cautious when making promises, but keep the promises they keep. Identify sources clearly. Identify sources clearly. The public is entitled to as much information as possible to judge the reliability and motivations of sources. Consider sources. Motive, motives before promising anonymity. Reserve anonymity for sources who may face danger, retribution, or other harm, and have information that cannot be obtained elsewhere. Explain why anonymity was granted. I never see that. I've never seen that. An unknown source. But they never say why they're unknown. They just say it's a fact because an unknown source. So that we're supposed to believe that. Diligently seek subjects of news coverage to allow time to respond to criticism or allegations of wrongdoing. Have you ever seen that? I don't see it ever. I don't see it from CNN. I don't see it from Fox. I don't see it from MSNBC. We can go down the whole line of news agencies out there. Avoid undercover or other uh, suspicious methods of gathering information unless traditional. Open methods will not yield information vital to the public. Be vigilant and courageous about holding those with power accountable. Give voice to the voiceless. Support the open and civil exchange of views, even views they find repugnant. Have we ever seen that on CNN? No. They immediately condemn you, and they never allow anybody to come back and and state or make a statement, or, or make an argument against what the news agency just said. No, it's never done. Recognize a special obligation to serve as watchdogs over public affairs and government. Are we seeing that happen? No, we're not. We are seeing what comes out of the government go right into the media, and that becomes the facts. No one is being the watchdog over government. We don't see it happening at all. They have now joined forces. Government and media have joined forces. They're in violation of the Code of Ethics. Provide access to source material when it is relevant and appropriate. Boldly tell the story of the diversity and magnitude of the human experience. Seek sources whose voices are seldom heard. Avoid stereotyping. Journalists should examine the way their values and experiences may shape their reporting. Label advocacy and commentary. Never deliberately distort facts or context, including visual information. Clearly label illustrations and reenactments. Never plagiarize. Always Attribute, I have to turn my page, sorry. Then then they go on by saying, minimize harm. Ethical journalism treats sources, subjects, colleagues, and members of the public as human beings deserving of respect. Are we seeing that? No, it's in attack mode. The journalists and the, and the, the news agencies are in attack mode. If, they, if you don't agree with their political agenda, they attack you. They are in violation of their own ethical code. I could go on and on. If you want to, if you want to read it, it's on pages 30, no, I'm sorry, 29 through, uh, let me look just one second. 39, 29 through, through. 34, no, 35 of my book, Ethically Thinking. It's not that hard. You can get it on Amazon. It's a cheap book. It's a very small book. It was the first book I ever wrote. But I wanted to address uh, ethics because ethics had had engulfed my life. And um, I wanted to write about it. And I wanted that people really think about what they say and about what they do. And journalists especially, they have a code of ethics. That's quite a lengthy code of ethics. But if you read it, and if you think about how they are reporting their news, it's no longer news. It is an agenda. 
And when we see them violating their own code of ethics, how can you have any respect for a journalist organization that is supposed to be ethically sound and report ethically sound news and verified news, going about putting out trash, misleading the readers and the viewers and the subscribers and whatever other source that you're getting your news from, it is no longer solid news. It is no longer ethical news. And I call the media out today. I said, I say to you, change your ways because you are not following an ethical standard. You are not showing any ethics in the way that you report what you call news. And we as Americans, we're getting tired of it. I'm tired of it. Gosh, if I have to uh, 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 stand with my code of ethics and I've got to adhere to it, I've got to live by it, so should the media. The media is very guilty of bad reporting. Every single day. You see it happening every single day. We've seen it with Washington Post. We've seen it with the New York Times. We've seen it with CNN. Fox, everybody is guilty of it. And if they don't start taking this seriously, then we no longer have a news source. We have a propaganda source. And that propaganda is being driven by politics and being driven by the government. Everything that comes out of the White House, immediately that becomes the talking point of the media out there. They don't investigate it. They don't look at it. They don't question. Even the individuals in the White House press room, they are such weak questions. They are not pounding on the press secretary to give them answers. They're going around it. They're protecting the White House. You do not see any good... Uh, I remember a long time ago, and I forget what her name is. There was a little old lady that was in there for years and years and years. And I tell you, when, she, when the president or the press secretary stood up to the platform, they dreaded a question coming from this lady because she was to the point, And she dug in until she got an answer. We do not see that same type of journalism coming out of the White House press room. And we certainly don't see it on individuals who are covering the White House, covering Congress, covering the Senate, covering any political entity out there. Instead, what they do is they just, okay, well, that's what he said, so it must be the truth. No digging. I mean, the biggest thing that we should be asking right now is Buttigieg out, out of his department. What is coming out of his mouth is pure nonsense. It is at an elite status. It is not at the American level. And that elite status needs to be questioned and needs to be pointed out to the American people. But yet people are so in love with this White House and they don't want to say anything bad. And that this is a time that we need to know what's happening. Because right now the White House is saying, oh, we don't have a recession. And then renaming the recession. They're not even calling the recession. They're renaming the recession. A technical recession. There's no such thing as a technical recession. If we're in a recession, we're in a recession. Don't lie to us. And journalists should be pounding the White House on that very issue. The code of ethics is not being followed by the media of any source out there. And we need to, as Americans, we need to point that out to them. Every time we see them or when we comment on Internet or whatever we're doing, we need to point out you are not ethically reporting the news. Listen, if you want to have more access to me, go to www.lodge-co.com. Again, that's www.lodge-co.com. Listen, I want everybody to go out and have a great day. Understand that the news that you're getting is nonsense. Hold them accountable to their own code of ethics of journalism. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye. 